right, guys, so we're back here working on the Audi. So check it out. I've been really busy. I forgot to record. That's my mistake. But like I said, this is not a how-to. I'm just kind of showing you guys how I do it. Um, check it out. Let me, let me show you guys real fast where I'm at. So I have the whole front end taken apart. I have everything practically hooked up, ex um, unhooked, I mean, except the uh, heater lines and the uh, slave cylinder. Um, everything inside is already out. Only difference on the B6 between the B5s is that you have to pull off the whole stereo to be able to get to the shifter bolts. But like I said, it's all done. Um, I'm practically ready. I lost my hooks, so I'm kind of ghetto rigging my calipers right now. So bear with me. So I'm gonna I'm throw you guys on the laps one last time, I hope. And I kind of hoping that everything's coming out. I'm gonna do one more double check on everything. So um, like I said, after I double check everything one more, more time, have the secondary um, radiators disconnected. I need to disconnect one more power steering line right here and the subframes ready to come off. So um, hopefully tonight it's uh, eight o'clock. So hopefully less than an hour, this thing will be out. All right guys, so I had a minor setback. Dropped a bunch of cooling right now from the secondary um, radiator. That's what I'm dealing with. But we're back. We are back. So uh, now it's time to, I'm just gonna drop it on my little uh, cart that one of my boys made for me at work and uh, take off the suffering bolts. So guys, like I said, I'll put you on the laps. Again, I really hope this time I put you on the laps. I'll drop everything. Hopefully the engine's out. Wish me luck. Fingers crossed. And I know it all too well. Got another new day. Still I'm feeling this place. I keep going down, down, down. Too many years going by. Caught in an action. I can't rewind. two sitting over here one thing I did not like about pulling it out like this on the b6 is uh, my uprights I think I'm gonna just take everything off and just leave the axle hanging by itself and take all this other shit off made it a lot more complicated I don't know if you guys saw in the video kind of made me struggle a little bit um, but for the most part broke the fucking heater hose line like a tard. Um, yeah, this is my little makeshift uh, uh, slave cylinder block off. So what it is is just a piece of hose, a uh, quarter inch bolt with a quarter inch hose. Um, bolt that fits really tight in there and just kind of just like that, guys. Like nothing fancy. Um, yeah, that's how it looks. 4.2 out here wasn't too terrible nothing anybody can't handle um yeah um, tomorrow i'll split everything up how i want it and we'll keep on going on this and now that's 
what's coming in there. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a completely different day from the day I pulled the engine. I pulled it on a Wednesday and today's Saturday morning. I kind of didn't record a bunch of other stuff that I ended up doing because I had to strip down the 4.2 and um, finish a couple things on the 2.7. So I'm gonna explain to you guys a couple things that kind of threw me off with the 2.7. And it was kind of simple, but it confused me. So I'm just gonna tell you guys what happened and uh, I'll let you guys know. So I've done a lot of these subframe drops I don't even know how many stage three cars I've done for a lot of people around town and uh, our area. But this time I was like, kind of like excited. And I ended up ripping off the harness to my uh, headlight level sensors. So if anybody's watching it and you have a harness, hit me up, DM me, please. Let me show you guys this right quick. So the heater core line, I ended up, this thing broke off, so I didn't really care. So it confused me because the, 4.2 only has one coming out and they have an auxiliary uh, auxiliary uh, um, radiators like they have one on this side one on this side like little intercoolers so I was uh, confused and then um, I was like well, how the hell am I going to connect my radio uh, my heater hoses and then I, I looked at this pipe look how obvious it is and it comes back over here I haven't got a chance to get to this because I've been working on the clutch on this, this is a, a little motorcycle lift or end lift that we found in, in the trash actually. And one of my good friends, uh, Chepo, um, finished it up for me and we ended up welding it up and making it sturdier so I could do this type of things. Shout out to him. And uh, so check it out. I got the Fidanza lightweight flywheel on. I did the rear main seal also. Um, and uh, RS4 clutch and pressure plate. So it's a, it's a pretty nice, decent little setup that I got going on here. Um, I just wanted to do everything before I separate this engine. Cause this engine, I am gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna sell it or part it out. It all depends on uh, who offers me what. So check it out. It's my uh, headlight level sensors. And they're ripping off the harness like a dumbass because I thought I was going to... I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. Um, yeah, this is practically loose already. I don't want to touch it because I might just wash my hands. But um, now I have to get the hoist, lift it up, separate it, and put that this transmission with that engine. And it's just really cold out, so I don't really want to be with the door open. So it's kind of like a clusterfuck in here. And check it out, look what I also did. Broke the, the fucking E-level sensor arms. Just being in a hurry, not thinking it through. Got my calipers just off to the side. I might pull them off completely, um, just so I could respray them. Either way, I have to bleed the system for the uh, sleeve cylinder, so it's kind of really not a big deal. Like, as you can see, got a brand new starter, because if any of you guys have ever done a starter on these fucking things, it's not fun. Um, yeah, I got my wastegate all, everything. Everything's kind of like just um, put together. Like my throttle body, I still need to powder coat this bad boy. I don't know how I'm gonna run this one, because people do 90 degree fittings for these. But I don't know, I was thinking like that and blocking off the other side, like switching sides. But I don't know if it's gonna work. Well, sure as hell find out, I guess, you know. Um, got my alternator tested, it was good. Um, one other thing, I wanna run the B6 style um, lines for like the starter and the main power. So on the alternator side, the plug's a little different on the on the B6, this plug for the alternator, it's a lot thicker, so it won't go in the slot. It's still a D style plug, but it won't go in all the way. I have this special little tool bought on Amazon. I'll probably throw a link at you because if you work on Audis, it's gonna save your life. Um, it's cheap, man. I think it's like 15 bucks for a complete set. And what it does, it depends your connectors. There's a lot of videos. Just look uh, up Audi D connector repin. It's the it's cheapest, easiest way to do anything like an Audi. You could buy like a complete set for like 15 bucks, like I said. So uh, yeah, uh, this is where I'm at. 
and um, I just wanted to show you guys, give you guys a quick update, because uh, on the time lapse you guys just saw, um, I had just barely pulled it out, and I just rolled it off to the side. Um, I might pull off my uppers, control arms, but like I said, I'm still not sure what I want to do, because I kind of want to repaint the subframe. It looks kind of like beat up. Just so when I get under there, I look at something nice, you know? Just being picky now. Thanks for watching once again. Like, comment, subscribe, and please tell your friends. And if you guys have any questions on, like I said, on this B6 2.7 uh, single turbo swap, um, feel free to ask because I ask a ton of questions too. So don't feel shy to ask. Um, catch you later. Yeah.